children are incredibly hopeful. They're deeply resilient. They have this ability to one minute be really incredibly silly and the next moment be um, taken over by the sadness of their world. And so I think one of the troubles is that a lot of their issues are masked. Um, it's not, you can't see them necessarily. They don't exhibit the same signs. They don't have verbiage or words to describe why they're sad or, or what's going on or why they're struggling in school or why they don't want to eat or why they can't sleep. And, and they also have, they develop a new normal really quickly, um, far quicker than adults do. And so often they don't know that their world is, is not normal. And so often there's, there's shame connected to that. There's um, this deep-seated, and especially if it happens during adolescence or developmental stages, that they are ripped from their home, ripped from their families, ripped from their um, way of doing life, and now put in this, this place where they don't belong and they don't fit in and, and they don't know how to. And um, so they have, the, I would say they are, you know, not that, that adults do not also suffer greatly, but kids, um, especially since they, this is their, this is their first go through. Um, in life and are, and are dealing with incredibly heavy, heavy things. Um, and so, you know, as asylum seekers, having to explain what has happened to them, um, you know, because usually there's interview process and they have to really talk about um, what they've seen and that's incredibly difficult for kids. They don't have a place for that. And so um, the trauma um, kind of continues over and over again. And then just fitting into a new culture and society and um, there's just so much that, their parents can help them with because their parents have never done it. And so they are, they're doing it on their own and having to grow up far too quickly. I mean, it's certainly like doing language lessons is critical. Um, so helping them have language, um, but also play is really, really important. Um, kids need to be kids. And they're often there, they have to grow up way too fast. And so integrating them in society, the beauty of kids is, you know, I think we've all seen the images of, you know, in the refugee camps and in everywhere, soccer games start. Kids play, that's what they do. And so having organized activities in that realm, helping them find friends with um, children of, of the city, of, you know, wherever they, they land so that they then can practice language in that setting. Um, and kids are really great um, when they're given an activity and, and just are able to do life together. Especially kids that maybe have been are unaccompanied or their parents have died or they're with an auntie or with you know, relatives, they, they need adults in their world to just show them that they're cared for and that they don't have to do the whole world on their own. And so often in those settings, that like just doing play and just having an adult near them allows them to be a kid for a while, um, which is unfortunately rare in their world. And so giving them that moment um, is really cool. And then just having other um, national kids um, in that is just a really sweet way to bridge that gap because kids are really great with kids. And um, you know, it's fun to see, and, and I've seen in, you know, in the classroom setting, students will come in and not speak to the adult, but they'll tell everything to their fellow students. And so using um, kids who um, you know, trust <laughs> to really help bridge that gap and help them feel like they are a part of something. Children's ministry can take a lot of different ways. Um, you know, I think we, it's often easy to think of, um, you know, the bring them to Sunday school and have them sit there and teach them a Bible lesson, which I think is definitely not the best way to go about it um, because we need to go to them. Um, children's ministries often, um, you know, opening your doors, yes, kids will come, but going into where they are and, and some of the coolest things that I've seen is just when you go in and bring face paint and bring like a party to where they are, they come out. Kids will always come. If there's fun, especially if there's food, if there's a soccer ball, they're there. And so for churches to just start building relationships in that and having, um, and I think two consistency is a really important factor. So if kids know, hey, we're here every Tuesday, they're going to be there every Tuesday and they're going to tell their friends. And in that, conversations are going to happen. In that, parents are going to come. In that, families are going to come. And that's when relationships can be developed. And it's often the cool thing of the kids or the conduit for relationships because kids are willing to make friends with everybody. 
where adults are skeptical and they're fearful, where if their kids are loved, parents are going to see that and going to ask questions. I think that's a cool way for the church to bridge the gap into um, adult ministry as well, um, just through the kids and loving on the kids um, and just having fun and play to never um, think that play isn't good enough or isn't spiritual enough. It's very spiritual and it's very um, important for kids. You definitely don't need to be a professional. Um, that's the beauty. Kids are really forgiving. Um, kids, you don't need to have, you don't need to speak their language. Um, they are, they're willing, they love to teach, they love to learn. Um, but one thing that's really important to know, especially with children of refugees, is that trauma aspect, is that trauma piece, that let the kids lead. Um, I think one thing that can be really traumatizing is often physical touch. Um, depending on what's happened to the child. Um, and so that's something to always be aware of. I think, especially as Westerners, um, we usually go in with arms wide open and, and hugs, and, and, and that can be okay sometimes, but for some kids, it's a really scary thing. And so to let kids lead, um, let kids, um, don't force children to play. Um, there should be absolutely no shame involved. Um, let kids, you know, if there's a kid sitting in the corner, um, invite the child in, but if the child says no or doesn't look at you, that's okay. For churches, like, how do you do this? Um, first of all, it's being aware of where are the refugees? Where are they in your city? Where are they? Um, and going to them. Um, I think it's important to have key community members as well um, because you can just show up and then you're weird and you're this odd person that just is here playing a game which can look a little like a pedophile. So we don't want that. So having key community members um, and you know, building trust, I think, is a huge thing. And that's why never, never invite at, at first, and doing it outside is super important. Because um, when you invite someone in, that's when it gets weird. And so we're doing it out in the open so everyone can see that this is, what we're doing is okay, we're just having fun. And, you know, doing it in, in short spurts, developing relationship, developing trust.